<laughs> I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. And here we go. It's the comic, 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 comic book book. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies. There's new bullying host, Leroy, a.k.a. Weapon Y, with my co-host. Uh, yeah, this is Eli, a.k.a. Squadron, Squadron Taco Supreme. There you go. That sounds like an evil supervillain <laughs> marketing scheme from Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, Damn, and I'm we're pale. back. I'm going to put my hat on. I'm pale as fuck. It's light. There, there you go. Give me some shit. There you go. No, let it shine. <laughs> let it let it you know, I'm bright, man. I'm like blinding myself. It's light. <laughs> man, let's get us monetized. Oh, we can't we have representation. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back with another episode. And I hate I hate to brag, but we have a meaty, girthy show for you this week. Really? Yeah, we got a lot. Okay. I guess I uh, it's gonna be another one where I'm not Maybe I'm not you're meaty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. I guess I guess I'm gonna be doing a lot of talking this week. So I got I got glad I got my water. But we got a bunch we're talking about. Uh, all I want to say is that it's a little small talk. I'd be glad with when uh March is over because one, this is a long ass month, it's like five weeks. Two, I don't know nothing about a damn bracket. So and April's just more fun. Oh, and the Easter snap. Hate the damn Easter snap because right now outside it is 31 degrees in Mississippi. I don't like that. So I'm not even is gonna it? ask you what what, what your uh what look like over there. Uh, you know. uh, we're 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 32. You're about we're about as ah, ah, we beat you. We beat you. It's, it's actually nice out right now. <laughs> That's not nice. If you can't go That's out and tropical flip flops, to us. <laughs> yeah, no, 31 is not good. I don't want to know 31 degrees. What we got here? Blinded by the lights. We can. Blinded by oh, the yeah. lights. Oh yeah. Awesome song. Awesome song. Yes. Eli thought this song's from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're back. Okay, so we're just going to jump into it. Like I said, we're going to, you got the banner. We're going to talk about what we're going to talk about, but we do have to pay our respects at first. So, first thing we're going to do is say, uh, rest in peace to Lance Reddick. Uh, like I said, Lance Reddick is, he's more like a, known as a, a vet guy. Now, if you don't know what mm-hmm. a vet guy is, a vet guy is basically that guy you see on TV. You're like, oh, that guy. You don't know his name. But you know he's that guy. Life fans, there's a bunch of stuff that he was in. Let's see what we got. Like I said, this if you've seen Lance Reddick, you've seen him before, you've seen him a bunch of stuff. One thing you've seen him in is John Wick. First thing mm-hmm. I saw him in. Like I said, he John Wick was shooting all these people, badass stuff like that, doing all this badass stuff. And then he goes to the hotel, and that's the guy running the hotel. I didn't first time seeing him, I was like, Well, who's this guy? He had a stage presence. I'm like, Well, this guy has a backstory. What's his deal? And then you get to the third movie, then you got his backstory, and you're just like this, and like, okay, that's that's pretty cool right there. So yeah. Oh, uh, what else did he play in? He also oh, actually his biggest role, his biggest role, and I'm sorry, I didn't watch the show. He was uh, one of the stars of The Wire, and I understand The Wire is one of the greatest works of fiction, you know, medium in the last thirty years. I get that. I didn't watch it. Sorry. I never you know. finished it. I only watched like the first couple seasons and then oh well, you even worse at least i didn't at least i didn't start on yeah. it well, no, no, i take it back i did i mean it was I cool watched... like what i saw was cool i just didn't get around to finishing it so. what it's it's the greatest piece of fiction ever made eli how did that's you what i hear i finish it that's 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 what everybody says you know mm-hmm. but he was awesome in it you know uh what do we got here he was in quantum break see i didn't play that game i didn't play the game fat t i reason i didn't play the game because i heard it was like like three hours of cutscenes or some shit and <laughs> it's like some guy like had his guy fuck control and he died in the middle of it. So I, I was like, fuck that. But <laughs> like he was in it. You know. Uh and we also gotta talk about this other thing he was in, also something we both talked about, something we both reviewed. He was in Resident Evil. He played I didn't finish that either. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, I finished that. Yeah, that's my bad. I finished that. But yes. So you didn't make it to where he played when he was dressed up as Albert Whisker. I uh, no, I made it. I, I think I had a couple episodes left and then i yeah 
And then you okay. told me what happened, and then I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, I don't even go back to this shit. Okay. But, yes, for some reason, they dressed him. he was completely miscast as Albert Wesker, who was actually a blonde guy. And then they had him looking like, you know. Actually, Blaise like, cousin, until, until he, you know, he wasn't bad. And then when you showed me the picture of him and that, I'm like, well, that's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they were you knew it was coming. But I'll be honest with you. I mean, the reason I showed it, because I'm not actually talking bad about him, I'm actually talking good about him, because he was by far the best thing about that show. He was carrying that show yeah. on his shoulders. Like, he was, he he did everything he could for that show. It was terrible. Because I, I didn't give a shit about the, like, the teeny bopper shit. Like right, I was, the CW I, yeah, shit going on. Yeah, here. yeah, I was more into his story and shit. And then they showed him a picture. That, they should have gave him a blonde. Should kept it, he could look like what's his face, Demolition Man. So you want to make Snipes. it even? Oh, like oh, Wesley Snipes. <laughs> he was already looking like Wesley Snipes. Look at him. <laughs> Just give him the blonde hair. <laughs> 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 uh, so yeah, so like like I said, everything he showed up, he was awesome, man. He had a great stage presence. Uh, next week is John Wick. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure he has other movies in the works, but yes, he's going to be in John Wick 4 also. So I, I guess people got to show up and show out, you know, because it's one of his last roles, at least his last big role that he's got coming up. So, yeah, yeah I want to say rest in peace to Lance Reddick. Yeah. yeah, good journey, sir. And another person for me, somebody else died this week, Eli, that hit me that I was like, oh, man, we got to talk about this. We have to talk about rest in peace to Bobby Caldwell, you know. One of the greatest all R&B the, singers. All the sing, yeah, yeah, yes. One of our greatest R&B singers of our time. Uh, and if you don't know what Bobby Caldwell looked like, this is what Bobby Caldwell looked like. One of our greatest R&B singers, soul singers of all time, Bobby Caldwell. Yes, he's white. <laughs> we didn't know that at the time. The reason we didn't know that at the time because this album cover, the very first album cover we put out, looked like this. So we didn't know. He just singing R&B songs on black stage all the time like that. Saying we jamming to a song uh, at barbecue, stuff like that. Not knowing we jamming to this the whole time. But he was killing it. I mean, what, what, what can you say? He was killing it. But they hit it very well. The thing was back then, this was before social media. This was before MTV. So if you didn't go to his concerts or didn't, you know, watch Soul Train, and shockingly, Bobby Caldwell never showed up on Soul Train, you didn't know what he looked like, you know. But... You listen to his songs, you love them. So, yeah, he was one of those rare artists that we listened to that we thought was black, but turns out years later we found out he wasn't black. So, that's the thing. Uh, funny thing, Eli, there was a other artist that's not dead, but he's still alive. Another artist that was white that I thought was black for the longest. Who, and Wesley? that was Phil Collins. <laughs> really? <laughs> I really thought Phil Collins was black, man. I, I'm sorry, growing up, like, I know it sounds crazy now, but think what back song back in the 80s. <laughs> It's actually a few songs. You got to remember. Okay. Studio or whatever. What is it? That was one of them. That's when really? I was like, okay. Man, not, not the first when I heard Studio, I was like, you know, maybe he's white. You know, but <laughs> the, in the air of the night, they played that song on the black stations all the time, like three, four times a day back in the 80s. And I'm sitting here listening to it. I'm like, okay, I love this song. In the air of the night. I'm like, okay, that's a jamming song. Then you see him on MTV. Yeah. And you're like, oh. This white guy, like, oh, he's just not white. He's white, white, you know. But not only on that, the... oh, go ahead. Did you ever see well, him saying, on? Uh... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> he had another song out also. Not only did he have in the air of the night that got played on black stations three, four times a day. He also had a song with Philip Bailey from Earth, Wind, and Fire, and it was one of my, it's one of my favorite songs of all time. And Easy Lover. You've, oh. probably, you've heard it. You've heard it. Yeah, okay. yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So they played that song on the on the uh, black yeah, station. I remember that three, four times played. a day. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, Phil Collins gotta be black. He is a black dude. <laughs> Turns out he's not. This is Phil yeah. Collins. So I was fooled. I'm sorry. I know Did I could not be the only person that grew up thinking Phil Collins was black. I'm sorry. Yeah. I I never I didn't think he was. <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever see uh uh Phil Collins? You've heard you've heard of Phil Collins. Go go Jim- Google in the air of the high night right now. In Jimmy Fallon, ear, yeah. yeah, Jimmy Fallon. He uh he had Phil Collins live, and the Roots backed him up. So Quest Love got to do that that fill at the end of that song. <laughs> okay, he had to do that part. He got to do, <laughs> and he did it with one hand. Oh wow! Okay. So yeah, I thought that was pretty. You know, he was waiting his whole life to do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Hope the camera like zoomed in. Every on drummer, yeah. every drummer has been wanting to do, <laughs> <laughs> to do that <laughs> with <laughs> Bill <laughs> Collins. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> uh, but you never heard of Lily Collins, White as Snow. She must be. I don't know who that is. Is that I'm his sorry. daughter? Is that that actress? Is that his daughter? Is that his daughter? I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't know. 
But Phil when Collins, I hear man. Yeah, Phil Collins. We're I'm, old. I'm not, again, again, we're old. We know who Phil Collins is. I am Collins. not the only person that grew up thinking Phil Collins was black. I, I'll stand by that. I'm sorry. There is somebody else that thought that. So, yeah. Do a poll. Do a poll. <laughs> you can't, you can't do a, a, a TikTok poll in 2023 is Phil Collins black. You can't do that. We got to go back think time Phil travel. Phil Collins used to be black. <laughs> because nobody's going to admit that now. <laughs> because it sounds stupid saying it. Like, what? Phil Collins is black. Uh, what? Okay. Didn't I know that? Whoever she is. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the actress, right? She's the fuck was she in? She was in something I seen. Sounds familiar. Now I don't remember now. Riverdale? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll just assume it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> she sounds Riverdale-ish. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anyway, we can move past it. Like I said, we got a bunch of show. We're going to jump into it. Like I said, I saw a movie this weekend. And judging by the box office, I'm the only person that saw this movie. So we'll just go with this one. Uh, what I did see was this weekend was Shazam Fury of the Gods. So Shazam. Can't come out. Shazam. Yeah. Uh, let's do a poll real quick. Eli, give it to me. What was the number one movie of the week? What do you What do you think it was? Do you think it was Shazam? I, I Well, it sounds like it wasn't Shazam if you're the only one who saw it. I'll show you. The, here's what we got. <laughs> it was Shazam. It was Shazam. Barely. Really? Scream was on his ass. Scream was on his bumper. That's its second week in Scream, too, right? That's second week in Scream. So, yeah. So, they, of course, they're not going to have him come out at the same time. But Scream, I guess, had like a little drop off. But anyway, like that, people were getting worried whether or not Shazam, because the thing is, every time a superhero movie drops, it's the number one movie at the box office. But Shazam was tracking so low, people were thinking, like, maybe Scream might beat it. And if that happened, that would have broken like a 15 year long streak in superhero movies. Like, was Shazam be the one to beat it? Like, no, nah, it, it barely held on, you know. Uh, but that's about it. So, yeah. So, anyway, I was going to do a whole thing. I was going to break down, you know, Superman versus Shazam and what makes him different and what, you know, you know some of his best comic shows and stuff like that. I was going to do all that. I like, you know, I PowerPoint shit. presentation. Yeah. I was like, first off, nobody gives a fuck about this movie, man. Why am I going to talk about all this shit? Let's just talk about the movie, just get out the way, just move on or something. The origin else. of Michelle Yeoh's character. No, not Michelle Yeoh. I was, I was not, uh, Luke. Man, that's racist as hell, man. <laughs> that's Lucy Liu. Oh. <laughs> Michelle Yeoh's in superhero movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she is. She's actually in two MCU movies, and nobody says anything about it, but we're we going to go yeah. past that, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, anyway, what I think about this movie. Okay, final line about it. Okay, this is bigger, grandioser, more stakes going on than the first movie. So you got some trade-offs with it. Well, the first movie had heart, you know, it was family and all stuff like that. They kind of traded the heart in and the, the smallest of the movie for, you know, big uh, – <laughs> Eli, hashtag Eli cancel. Yeah, do it, do it, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's like, it's like it's a big, grandiose movie, but in the heart, even though the movie does have heart, it's not uh, a, like a contract by numbers movie. There's still some heart and humor and stuff like that, but it's definitely going for a bigger feel to it. So you got a trade off in it. Overall, I do feel like, I'm just go off the bat on it. I do feel like this is a better movie than the first one. Even though I do feel like there's some trade-offs in it, but I feel like it's better because I feel like it builds off the first movie. The first movie did the heavy lifting. It told you the origin story. It basically gave you a blueprint of how Shazam's powers work, who Shazam is, who his family is. So it had to get all this stuff out of the way. And had to learn how to use his powers, train, all like that. Okay, first movie. Got all that out of the way. Now we can get to the superheroing, the shazam mean, And the movie just out the gate just gives you all the stuff like that. So you got six teenage Superman all throughout the movie. I mean, this movie got one, just got six. And they're all throughout the movie. They're all fun. They all have different person. Well, I ain't gonna say all of them have different personalities. Some of them stick out more than others. But for the most part, they're fun watching Billy Batson bounce off the other fan. Because the first movie you had Billy Batson, Batson bouncing off his family when they were younger. Now it's the same dynamic, except they're all superheroes but they're still teenagers they're still acting like teenagers so when they go out and save the city they fuck up the city worse than what they did before why because they're a bunch of teenage superheroes don't know what the fuck they're doing you know it's fun uh at first i was wondering like why are these old ladies in this movie Her helen mirren and lucy Lou? why are they fighting them instead of you know somebody that we know but they were fun they were fun in this movie helen mirren and lucy Lou did it well helen mirren was fun lucy Lou just read wrote on a big dragon the whole time didn't really do shit you know that's about it <laughs> She was fun. Helen Mirren versus Shazam. I never thought that was something I wanted, 
but I'm so glad I got it. I never expected Shazam to body slam an old lady, and I thought this shit was funny as hell, you know. Uh, and then she got a few shots in on him too, and then the whole crowd like, ooh, 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 you know, I was liking that shit there. Oh, uh, the movie was funny. That's the thing about it. This is a funny movie. It's this. Hold up, let's see what we got. Mm-mm-mm. How was West Story? Been? Oh, yeah. Okay. You, you, if you've seen the trailer, you kind of know what she's doing. She's she's the third sister. Like here, Helen Mirren and Lucy Lou. She's the third sister, but she's not as evil as them. She like uh, she is evil, but then she meets Freddie Freeman and she like falls in love and like turns over to their side and like help betray her sister like that. So that old that old story, you know. Who's West, she basically West a story? Oh, is that West Side Story? Is he West Side Story, yeah, West okay. Side Story. The girl that was in West Side Story is one of the people in this movie. So yeah, mm. she's cool. She's in it. I like that part in. You know, um, like I said, Shazam fighting the big ass dragon. That was fun. There was some cool action scenes in it. Shazam versus Helen Mirren. That was cool. Uh, just the superheroing, flying all the stuff they're doing. All that was cool. Just them having banter, going back and forth. It almost. I'm not saying it did. I'm just saying if it, it almost felt like avengers level how the avengers were like bouncing off each other having fun so like that the chemistry it was having it kind of felt like that like they felt like a family and it was cool um what else about it let's go to my boy zachary levi now what let's because i had problems with his uh, performance in the first movie because i felt like he was playing it too young even though uh, the boy was like 15 but now the boy is 18 in this one or something that's what they say he is like 17 18 something like that and he's playing it seemed like he's playing it even younger than what he did before so like man come on man y'all need to get on the same page like that oh look what i did what would you do i put i changed the background <laughs> no you did you oh yeah what what did i have you, it on you had it on the 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 white dead guy <laughs> <laughs> my bad my bad <laughs> I'm, I'm losing track i'm losing track let's get back on focus okay Appreciate that, Eli. Thank you. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, what I was gonna say. Uh, Shazam, like I said, Zachary Levi is still playing it because it feel like he's playing like a flanderization of it. For I don't know what the trope of flanderization is, it's when you see a reoccurring character that gets dumber and goofier and bigger and more cartoony the more times you see him. That's what he's doing. Instead of playing it like an 18 year old would play it, he's just playing it like a 12 year old in the 90s. That's how he's playing the role. And I think he's playing a little bit too young. So that's whatever. But at the same time. When he's doing the superhero Shazam shit, he's nailing the superhero Shazam shit. He has a presence with this. When he's fighting dragons and flying through it and capes flowing and shit like that, he almost feels like Kmart Henry Cavill, you know? But that's high praise. That's not a knock. That's high praise. So I got to give him credit on that. So I think he's pretty good on that one. Uh, One thing I do want to knock about this movie is that they leaked a big spoiler of Wonder Woman. They put it in the trailer. This is not a leak. This is not something on Twitter. They put it in their own trailer. Wonder Woman is in the movie, you know, but it's funny. Every time Wonder Woman shows up, it's funny. Even though she's like a cameo, it's funny because. Oh, she, so she shows up more than once? Technically. One time they just show her like a body, like they don't show her face. So it could be anybody. I'm pretty sure it's like a, a stunt double, something oh. like that. So she but don't the end of the movie is her. You say which one? They, they they don't show her kicking ass or anything. Oh no no no! She shows up at the very end. They actually they explain. No no no! They, well, they actually explain why no other superheroes show up in this movie. They, they actually have a good reason for that. Because oh. the 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 evil chicks put a dome around Philadelphia, so nobody. Can get it. So oh, that's why no other superheroes yeah. can show up. So she didn't show up until the dome goes down. So yeah, they should um, have just had whoever, just CGI whoever, and just have them have Wonder Woman show up and kick a few asses and yeah. Yeah, you know, none of it. She well. didn't show up to. She actually she serves a purpose, and so she didn't just show up. She actually served the point in the plot, but that's only at the very very end. But the funny thing about it, they have the reoccurring joke with Wonder Woman is that Billy is trying to hook up with Wonder Woman the whole time. So yeah. like the wizard, you know, is uh trying to sneak out of the uh, jail cell because the the evil chicks got him trapped. So like that, she's like the only guy I can sneak out. I gotta like do an astral projection to Billy. So he sneaks into Billy's dream, and while he's into Billy's dream, uh, he's having a dream about Wonder Woman. So right before he's about to kiss Wonder Woman, like the wizard turns into Wonder Woman. He's like, Billy, wake your ass up. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, and Billy's like, like, it's just saying like hollers in the screen. Everybody was like laughing their ass off. So they had some funny scenes in there. Oh, um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Um, 
But overall, like I said, it's a fun movie. If you go into the movie, this is, I know everybody wants their superhero movies darker, grittier. They want Daredevil. This ain't that. This is goofy. This is wacky. This is, you know, this is Shazam. This is what Shazam has always been. This is what he's supposed to be. And they make it more Shazam-like in this movie. Because the thing is, they never really went into Shazam's lore in the first movie because he don't know anything about his powers. In this one, they go more into his lore. Uh, the wizard stole the powers of Hercules and uh, Achilles and all shit like that. And that's why the, the crazy old chicks are after him, you know. So they go into detail about that, and I kind of like that. They It's more wackier. You got more magic going around there. End of the movie, I'm spoiling it. Like, they, they fight over with a unicorn. So this is that type of movie. So if you don't want to go see a movie like that, this ain't for you. Go wait to see some. This is not Frank Miller Shazam. This ain't that. This is goofy shit. Uh, Kitty shit. Basically. Frank Miller, yeah, Frank Miller can't do Shazam. Or, well, or could, could you imagine anyway, him, just or, him or Alan Moore? <laughs> well, that was saying because Alan Moore did a version of Shazam. That's what I'm saying. You don't want that. But I can imagine Frank Miller doing like a fucked up version of Sazam just because like racist and shit, probably a Nazi or something, you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but that's it. But this ain't that. Like I said, so if you go in expecting something grittier and you, you're tired of, you know, funny shit in your comic, you don't like comedy in your superhero movies, don't go see this. You're going to go in, you're going to hate this movie. This ain't that. If you want to go in and have fun and watch unicorns and ogres and, 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 uh, what is that crazy? What is that lion, snake? What is that thing? Chimera? Whatever that thing is. I can't remember what it oh. is. Oh, you're talking about mythology, Greek mythology. Mythology, like that, yeah, all that shit. If you if you want to see that shit, it's there. You know. Uh, you want to see a, a, a teenage superhero in a grown man's body fight a dragon? It's there. If you don't want to see that and you think that's too goofy, this ain't for you. What did Yoda say in Empire Strikes Back when he was talking to Luke when he was training him? You only take with you what you bring in with you or some shit. That's it. If you take that in with you with this movie, that's what you're going to get. And so I went in with open mind, had fun. I enjoyed myself. Uh, like I said, it's one of the better superhero movies that came out in like the last two years. In past <laughs> post-pandemic era, you know. Okay. Yeah. So overall, I'm going to give it a four out of five. That's what I'm giving. Not the greatest superhero. Don't go in thinking this is the greatest superhero. Movie. This ain't Shazam in game. Shazam win a soldier. This so is this better that. than Black Adam? Hmm. I see. Yeah, that's the thing. I like Black Adam, so I can't <laughs> say that. So I'm, I'm like, I didn't I said, mind Black Adam. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't mind Black Adam. So like I said, but they're two different tones. Like I said, which movie would I recommend for other people? I recommend Black Adam first because Black Adam is the anti-hero in the rock. Blah blah blah. Where this is more goofy kitty shit. So I probably recommend this just to everybody. I recommend more people to Black Adam than this. But overall, this was a, and, and I do think. The runtime was a little bit too long on this one. They could have tightened it up a little bit where Black Adam was like, get in, get out. So overall, I would say Black Adam probably is a better movie, slightly, even though everybody will say Black Adam is dog shit, but whatever. That's just my opinion. Is this better than Quantumania? Yes. Notice, Eli, because you asked me, would I recommend, like, what would I recommend Quantumania? No. Would I recommend Eternals? No. Would I recommend Shazam 2? Yes. Honestly, Eli, I think you would go in this movie and you'd be like, yeah. I was entertained. I think you would be like that in this movie. I didn't mind the first Shazam. You I didn't. You didn't Black mind the first Adam. one. No. Yeah, and they do feel like a a book into each other. Like if you seen the first Shazam movie. Oh, another thing I do like about this movie is that remember how one of my complaints about the first movie that I felt like it was too like a tonal shift was too much. Like one time it was doing goofy goony shit, and then next thing it's like a, it turns to a horror movie out of nowhere. And so. Oh. But I like yeah. that. I like that. I, like the I'm, evil I'm, guy was there. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. But I'm saying it was too much of a shield. Did you close your like, eyes? Oh! <laughs> no, I didn't close my eyes. But I'm just saying, like, I'm enjoying myself. Oh, this is funny. This is goofy. What the fuck? You know, like oh! that. Large, so, large. Ah! Right. But here's the thing. Shazam 2 has some fucked up shit like that in the movie also. But they balance it better. That's the thing. So it doesn't feel like a tonal shift. It's more in cohesion with each other basically the movie starts off with fucked up shit so when it starts off with it you're prepared for anything after that you know because yeah they and people like die left and right and it's like like you didn't have to kill that guy but fuck it <laughs> you know this so i do feel like the first one yeah the, the monsters like eat the whole board members and shit like, but i'm just it, it came out of nowhere you just like okay like wait wait what <laughs> you know where in this one when they do fucked up shit it's it's more in line with each other. You kind of see it. You should expect it to come. It's still shocking, but it's not just out of nowhere, you know. So, 
right. That's my own thing. So yeah, I enjoyed the movie. Forty five. Eli, I wouldn't recommend Quantum Mania. I would recommend this for you. Yeah. Check it out on HBO Max. It'll be on like 45 days from now. So I'm like sure. That. Yeah. yeah, I'll probably see yeah. it. So that's all I got. All right. So now I'm going to take a breather, a break, while you take over because I know you wanted to talk about something or you didn't want to talk about something, but let's talk about it anyway. Talk about did Superman? You... What? Why? Superman Lois. Did you watch it? Oh, yeah, I did. Awesome. I like the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Me too. <laughs> okay, change the subject. Did you watch Gotham Knights? No. Is okay. that on? Yeah, it's on. You know what? I thought you were talking about the game. <laughs> no, I was talking about the show. Everybody keeps thinking that show was canceled. The show was not canceled. The show was never canceled. It was coming out, and it they debuted this week. Okay, no, I didn't watch it because I'm like, yeah, why it came on like after Superman asking after me. <laughs> Yeah. No, I was talking about the Gotham Knight show, that shitty CW no. show that came out with. Yeah. No, I didn't watch that. I thought you complete, I thought com- you were gonna talking about the game and shit. No, I was talking about that show, and that show was complete dog shit. Matter of fact, it's you're so like, I gotta shit. talk about Gotham Knights. I'm like, okay, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> the CW. And they, <laughs> like, that, show, that show is so bad, y'all owe Batwoman an apology. That's how bad that show is. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't I wasn't gonna watch. Oh, yeah, CW. So I'm back. I'm saying, okay, we got. I think we got three w- CW shows. I'm counting Gotham Knights. We got uh, Superman, Superman and Lois, we which is great. Flag. I love. I love that show. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah, it's it's great. Yeah. It's great. It's a great show. Yeah. I'm like, so like, I on all the CW shows at this level. I don't get it. Yeah. Because even the Flash, yeah. are like this, y'all last season. Why y'all doing filler episodes? Like the very first <laughs> beginning of the episode. Barry and Lois, like, we're on a vacation. Bye. And it's about the sidekicks. Like, it's the last season. Why are you doing this shit? So, I don't know. <laughs> but you want to talk about Superman and Lois. Okay. <laughs> no, it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. I, I like it. I'm glad it back. Did you notice the uh, recast of the boy? Uh, I did. I know. Okay. I, and, and, and he did all right. I mean, I was I like, oh. Right I was like, yeah, yeah he's fine. New kid. And yeah. he's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, he's fine. So I don't know what everybody's freaking out about. Plus, he was like the other kid anyway. <laughs> yeah. The one with the superpowers, the one everybody cares about. So yeah, yeah, and he, and that, that that where he was flying over the ocean. I'm like, holy shit, this is like that, that shit look good. It didn't yeah. like they ripped off Zack Snyder though. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but that shit look cool, and that, and the way he was talking about, it, I bet you can't keep up with me, old man. And so we're like, oh really? So we're like, bam, be passable. You gotta go fast now. You want to catch this old man? I like. Okay, I, I like this shit. It's just, yeah. it's just a fun show, man. It's just a yeah, fun show. And like the effects level, like I said, you're flying over the, the ocean. The effects like, look good. Yeah, for whoa. TV, that shit look good. Yeah, I was like, damn, okay. Look better than Quantum Mania. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Uh, All right. So, but that no, that wasn't what we're gonna talk about. Well, what you gonna talk about? Okay. You're gonna talk about because I'm, I'm gonna get you angry. Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Mandalorian. Mando. Mando. We're going to talk okay. about Mando. Because you're going to be... Here's the thing. Okay. Can, can I can I talk about... The, I know I know we banned Star Wars. I know we're going to talk about Star Wars on the show. We banned Star Wars for a good reason. And I'm pretty sure when we talk about this next segment, we're going to find out why we banned Star Wars on this show. <laughs> but I got to say what I got to say about this. Oh. What the fuck is going on in this episode? I'm just saying... I Because here's the thing. I wasn't like fully invested. I was like doing other shit. I was reading Stormwatch. That's what I was doing. I was reading 90 Stormwatch. That's what I was doing. So I just had super, uh, uh, Mandalorian playing in the background. I'm like, whatever happens in the background, some cool shit happens. I pay attention to it. The first beginning of it, flying, dogfight. I'm like, okay, that shit is fucking awesome, man. We talk about shocking. Superman and Lois CGI. Mando CGI. Like, Disney throwing some money at this shit. I, I, I was loving that shit. I was like, yes. And then it ended. It went to something else. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Then it turned into an episode of Andor. <laughs> yeah, I, I checked out. I know Andor is the greatest thing to ever happen to Star Wars fans of all time. I get that. I'm sorry. I checked out. I'm like, until they get Mando and and some other uh, somebody with a bucket head on this on their uh, on screen or Baby Yoda on screen. I'm checking out. Whatever the fuck is this going on? Y'all have at it, you know. And the thing is, I don't mind an anthology. I know I'm gonna let you talk. I'm sorry. I got to talk about this. I don't mind an <laughs> anthology story. If you want to talk about somebody else, do something with it. Make it interesting. Make it, make it a plot. Make it a conflict. That was nothing. That this was just two people doing shit that went nowhere on another planet. Had nothing to do with the story. And then that's it. I'm like, <clears throat> why are you doing a filler episode in a Disney Plus show? Like, 
you being worse than the Flash right now. That's just me. I'm done. I know I crossed the line, but I'm gonna let you just go. No, I, I agree. It seems like they just took a detour. They're taking mm-hmm. like an ep- they're taking an episode detour and introducing like another show. Is this another show that they're that they're t- doing? It didn't seem like it was. Yeah, because yeah. like who are the, there was who no are protagonist guys? of it. Yeah, yeah. Who I I know that scientist wasn't he in the like the first episode with Werner Herzog when they were when they were first. Don't, don't ask me. Don't ask me. Yeah. I think he was I mean, in if he was, one. then okay, maybe. Because honestly, it just felt like just random dude just show up. Yeah, but I'm saying who who is this guy and why should I give a fuck about him and why is the whole episode about him? That's and what I was rem- waiting on you because I like yeah. I need Eli to explain this shit to me. And I'm I remember, sorry. and that's what I felt about. Now I know everybody loved when Book of Boba Fett took the Mando detour and they threw. We got Luke and Baby Yoda and Ahsoka. Oh, that's so that's good so like great. that. That's our fate. That's the best episode of Book of Boba. At Fett, least it was engaging. At least it and was like, engaging with something like that. They went with this. And I'm like, who the fuck are these people? Yeah, and their storyline like, made no. The storyline went nowhere. Like if the storyline yeah. go and even the storyline don't tie to Mando, okay, go somewhere with it. Tell a story with this. This was just shit happening, not interesting at all. That's that's the guy me. So well, especially after the last episode where they introduced the Mythosaur and they're really getting into like the culture of the Mandalorians and their their history and stuff that I'm waiting to see the Purge and all that shit. You right, know, all stuff the, that I want to see. Yeah, and. This episode, they nope. We're gonna start talk. We're gonna introduce this whole other cast of characters and take them on a separate journey. And I don't know if that's working for me, anyways. Like I said, I think I've heard that they want to like integrate all these different shows into like kind of like the, an, an MCU style universe where all the show or like the CW universe where all the shows sort of blend together, but. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about mixing episodes within each other's seasons. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's what I felt like. To, like I, I want to see. I, I would have been even satisfied if Mando was going to Coruscant. He was yeah. nowhere near Coruscant. No, it was just a. So separate, it's just like, what is what is this? Like, yeah, let's let's take a pause from the shit I that 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 you care about, and let's introduce new shit that no one knows about or gives right. a fuck. Because I don't give a fuck. I get what they're doing. I know what this is about. That dude's working on cloning. They were trying to clone Baby Yoda. Is that what he was doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was what he was doing. That, yeah, I, I'm he was sorry, cloning. I, I kind of checked out, but you're right, he was talking yeah, about Yeah, he's cloning Baby Yoda because they need, a, they need a clone with force powers so they can make a fucking another Palpatine or Snoke or whoever the fuck. Or Stormtroopers with Jedi powers or something. Remember, they're, that, that's what these shows are. They're fixing all their fuck-ups in the movies. They're retroactively writing them out of the rut. So now they got to make Palpatine being a clone and Snoke, all that bullshit matter. So now that's what this is for. They're going to like, this is, a, this is all about them cloning and getting to that, you know, the shit in Rise of Skywalker where they were cloning Palpatine and Snoke was part of that whole cloning process. So that's what this is for. It's, and I don't give a fuck. I don't care about any of that shit. I want to see the underbelly crime shit. That's what I that what Mandalorian is. <laughs> he's right. like he's like an outlaw. That's what I want to see. I don't give a shit about Palpatine and the clones and any. I don't give a fuck about it anymore. You know. So that's what was frustrating with me. It's like I like especially with they they hey the mythosaurs aren't extinct. Sweet. Let's have some more of that. But nope. Let's introduce this whole other show. It, it, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? So, uh yeah, I was a little frustrated. And kind of like, and, but yeah, like the, the, the dog fight sequence, Bo-Katan doing her flying shit. You know, I thought that was all dope. You know, finding her, her, her castle all fucked up. I'm like, okay, Bo-Katan's pissed now. And, and it had me, you man, because it had me hyped for the episode. I'm like, oh, this episode's going to be awesome. And yeah. then it just ends. And then, and then we, yeah. You know. And like, why, why, why are we here? Is this going to pay off somehow? Or is this just introducing another show is this skeleton crew or going to relate to another? you know what i mean like what all these list of shows star wars shows they got coming out you know like what's the purpose i just of this? wanted an interesting storyline with that that's yes. like i would have gave it a pass if it was an yeah. interesting storyline between those people like a beginning ending 
and conflict and resolution like a normal story would be. Yeah. It was none of that. That's all. Just give me that at least. And you can go do detour and do whatever the hell you want. Yeah, that's what I feel. I feel like sometimes they're, they're, the shit is just badly written. And I feel like they're like, just trying to like- This isn't how you tell hold. story, right? This is- <laughs> yes, I know. That was my big frustration with Book of Boba Fett. You know, they, they, they took forever to get anywhere. And then right when you start to care, they took a detour to somewhere else. And then they wrapped, they, they came back and half-assed it in the end. And like what could have been awesome turned out to be just kind of meh, you know? <laughs> I don't know. So don't that's know how I felt this. about this is like, what the hell? Why, why, are we, why are we diverting from a cool story arc, you know? And talk about just yeah. random people that may have just got killed off all I know. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, they're on Moff. What they he was on Moff Gideon's ship. Okay, I get it. So Moff Gideon's out there doing some shit somewhere. You know, why aren't I we why it. why isn't he back? Why 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 do we care about these people, these random folks that used to work for him? You know, and I don't care. I, I yeah, I, I get I get oh the rebels are just as fascist as the empire, and I get they're trying to do all that crap. I don't care. You know, I didn't give a shit. Like, let's get back to the mythosaurs and Mando, you know, trying to like stop being a pussy and so he can finally pick up the dark saber. You know, quit being a bitch and be, <laughs> pick up the dark saber. Because <laughs> Bo Katan's, you know, showing him up and shit. She's got bigger balls than he does, you know. So, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Star Wars getting woke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Let, let, let's see, let's let's continue on that storyline you know let's let's because i was that's that's what's interesting you know i don't care about the cloning and trying to write trying to write the wrongs of the rise of skywalker you know <laughs> yeah, so. i don't care about palpatine or snoke or any of that shit you know yeah, yeah you see this is why we ban it jake this is why we ban it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Make make him a blood pressure, raise him a blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least this time we're on the same page. So it, yeah, it, it's, yeah. So it's, yeah. it's different this time. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is. It is getting a little frustrating, you know. And I was just saying, like, it, it, you know, basic storytelling just seems to like fly out the window when it comes to Star like, Wars. This is like <laughs> elementary shit you just do like it's yeah you have to do certain things to tell it's like when you're making music you do certain things to make music because if they're not music it's noise and that's yeah. what it is if you're not telling a complete story it's noise that's what it is I feel like no that's why when i i'd rather read this shitty 90s storm watch image comic than whatever the hell was happening on screen with that with those people yeah. like if you want to and or if you want to do some and or political shit then do an and or political show and that's what Andor did. Right. Don't shove your political shit into this cool outlaw space western shit. You know, I don't. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. It's like the mythosaurs. Like, oh, they were extinct. Did Bo-Katan know? Did she know that they were extinct? Was she hiding? Was she protecting the mythosaur? What was going on? We don't know because let's shove all these fucking nerds. You know, whining about ah. Oh, we used to work for the Empire, and now we work for the Rebels, and ah, oh, like oh, I, I miss those travel biscuits. Ah, uh, like I don't, I don't care, you know. Let's get yeah. back to the, you know, what? Let's get back to the Mandalorian. That's what the show's called, you know. Right. So, anyway, Superman and Lois is awesome. And Superman, yeah, it's sad when the CW was better than Disney. <laughs> <laughs> and that's free. You just... and that was free. <laughs> right. yeah. Oh, man. That being said, can I talk about my favorite show I saw this week? Okay. It okay, it was on Amazon. Lose? No, it wasn't Superman and Lois. No. <laughs> was it Was it Mandor? Man- Mandalorian wasn't even this like that. My favorite show this week, a show that came out of nowhere, Swarm. This is my favorite show that came out this week. I got to just briefly talk about this show. because Oh, is this th- that new Donald Glover shit or whatever? This is the new Donald Glover shit. Oh, not there. So, yeah, this is this new Donald Glover shit right here. So, this show is honestly one of the most disturbing, unsettling TV shows I've seen in a while. It's, <laughs> it's weird, and it made me uncomfortable, and it made me feel dirty just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was awesome. I mean, like I said, I, I got to tell you what this show is about. So, yeah, the show is about, and I'm spoiling it for you, it's about a serial stripper, serial killer. A serial str- Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I fucked it up. A stripper <laughs> serial killer 
that but goes she's a stripper. From t- she's a stripper that kills, not a she's killer a stripper of strippers. Not, a, not killer. a killer strippers. Yeah, she's killer. a stripper that kills. Yeah, okay. that's the thing. But she goes around killing anybody that talks shit about Beyonce online. So she goes from town to town. Yeah, that's what she does. That's awesome already. <laughs> right. But the thing is, it's not Beyonce. It's like not Beyonce. It's like uh, another person. But it's Beyonce. Oh, it's, it's like a, very, like a like a the a fictionalized version of a fictionalized you know, version, but it's Tanny it's or whatever. Yeah, but it's Beyonce. It's just straight up Beyonce. It, they don't even pretend about it. So she goes, so she's like going to the town, like wherever she's holding the concert, and anybody talking shit that happens to be in that town at the concert, she kills them. And the thing is, they doing so so much real life stuff. They have like the the See, people don't know about Beyonce. They really don't know that Beyonce basically has her fans are a cult, the beehive, and they'll attack anybody online that says anything negative about Beyonce. Matter of fact, they are so bad that, okay, when Jay-Z cheated on Beyonce, they had a rumor of who they thought it was, some reporter named Rachel Rose, something like that. They didn't know it was Rachel Rose. They thought it was Rachel Ray. Remember the cooking chick? So they started sending oh, yeah. death threats to her. You know, uh, and they will anybody talk bad about Beyonce, they will why were they mad at the chick? Because she cheated on Beyonce with Jay Z. Even though it wasn't her, because her and, no, her it, name but, was but similar. Jay Z's fault. Like what the- they don't care. <laughs> They're blaming <laughs> the own the chick. But the thing was Rachel Ray, the cooking chick, had nothing to do with that. Yeah. She didn't fuck Jay Z. Her name just sounds like the chick that fucked Jay Z. So they went after her. That's how crazy these people are. But they definitely talk about like uh celebrity worship culture in general. That's what the show is about. You know, just anybody that just, you know, attacks fans for no reason. Um, like when Donald Trump tell people to storm the Capitol, shit like that, you know, they don't say anything about that. But it, and, and the thing about it, they do a lot of like real shit in this show. For instance, uh they have a scene where the, the main chick bites the chick you know bites the the star that not beyonce chick you know in the club that happened to beyonce in real life you know a, a crazy fan bitter you know Damn. uh other stuff there was a story they did like a lot of people don't know they think they just made this part up the story where the four strippers shot a, a dude that was uh changing their tires that happened in real life so they do a, a mimic of that in this show so it's like i said it's atlanta it's, it's basically the same people that made atlanta this is a dark satire. If this was an episode of Atlanta, like season four, it would fit right in. You would think nothing about it. But I will say this. The chick that plays it, Dominique Fish, Fishback, I might be saying the name wrong. She, They need to throw her every award there is by the time this show, by award season comes on. Because she, she killed it in this role. She goes from playing like a person that was like shy and uncomfortable to this fucking serial killer. And the level she goes, it's like she plays a different person almost every episode. Time she get from the last episode to the first oh, so episode. It's a, it's she, a show. It's a like it's a, a show. Movie. It's seven episodes. Seven episodes. Get in, get out. Thirty minutes. Okay. Uh, what's about the cult of comic book bullies? Yes. What, what, yes, the two Jacob. Of you? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> what's that flick with Wesley Snipes and De Niro? Uh, the fan. Uh, so, was it the fan? The fan. I think it was the fan. Yeah. Yeah, like that. yeah. Where 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 De Niro was like a super creepy fan of. Wesley yeah. Snipes was like a baseball player or whatever. Yeah. And we say fans don't go that far. Fans don't go this far. Fans, a lot. Of, like I said, we we say a lot of shit from the 80s that you don't get, but we're going to say this shit from the 80s. Okay. I mean, Ronald Reagan got shot back oh, in the yeah. 80s. Yeah. He got shot by a crazy fan that was trying to get the attention of Jodie Foster. Yeah. Why? I don't know. That's because that's how crazy fans are. Because he watched Taxi Driver too many times. He watched Taxi Driver too many times, wanted to get Jody Foster's attention, <laughs> so he shot the president. Does it make any sense? None whatsoever, but it happened. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, well, that's like, all I see. like metal fans can get pretty rabid. Um, yeah. Yeah. I remember those, like when I used to work at the, the, the club and shit, and, you know, we all just saw Slayer. Slayer yeah. had played. And we came back to the bar. We came back, you know, the, we all hung out there and shit. And we're all hyped up. Just saw Slayer. Well, mm-hmm. a wedding party. Right across the street, there was like the Union Depot and a lot, a lot of weddings. They would hold a lot of weddings there. Well, a, a wedding party decided to come over to the bar full of Slayer fans who just got seeing Slayer. And yeah. a brawl ensued. Um, <laughs> wow, yeah. okay. And so, yeah, these, these like, yeah, this wedding party decided to start shit with a bunch of 
metalheads who just got done seeing Slayer, and it, it didn't go well for them. I will say. <laughs> so yeah, and it's and it's like I said, it's sad, and like I said, it is a mental disorder when you get so wrapped up, you wrap your entire identity into somebody that doesn't even know you exist, you know. And they explain all that. And well, I won't say they explain it, but they go there to that links in the show. And like I said, we've all have our fans. We've all gone links and drove this place to go see this person and stayed overnight to go see this person and, you know, pay this much money to go see this person because we're all fans of, you know, whoever we're fans of. But yes, some people do take it a little bit too far. Some people are wrapped too much into it. Some people, their entire identity is carved into that. Some people do take yeah. it personal. You know, if they say that, you know, if you say you don't like Beyonce, it's like that people will take for, well, well, fuck you then. You know, like, what? what? I, that's it. I don't like Beyonce's music. Nothing about you, you know. And we, <laughs> you know, fandom, yeah. fandom in general. Yeah. You know, and so not even just Beyonce and this like that. We talk about Marvel. We talk about Harry Potter. We don't talk about Harry Potter, but, you know, you got people to go that crazy over this shit, you know. So, like I said, it's it's dangerous. I think celebrity culture is even out of more control because now you got people fans of people that are not even with talent. We got people obsessed with Kim Kardashian. She can't even rap. Like, what the fuck? She can't do so, shit. Can't do shit. She Taylor even, Swift has a cute, huge ass coat. They she saying can't even do good porn. <laughs> she just lays there. She's a fucking she starfish. Sucks at porn too. Like, She's a starfish. She, she just lays there. Like, <laughs> she sucks at everything. Why? Why? Do people... But but she has this crazy <laughs> fan base. Like, what the fuck? You know, uh, yeah, Taylor Swift. I heard Taylor Swift crazy fan base has a uh, a crazy well, fan base also. Well, speaking so, of yeah. Beyonce, I actually worked a Beyonce show. I had, I was part of the stage crew and I had to break down her stage. Um, oh, okay. So I got to watch her show from backstage. Um, and yeah, after the show, she jumped in her SUV. They actually drove an SUV into like the garage, and she just jumped in, and then they all a big old caravan of SUVs just you know, like she was the president and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i think like jay-z and beyonce came to jackson one time to like shut down like an entire highway you know just yeah. To come through. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah i mean for i mean again coming from the metal scene or the punk scene uh for me like you see like you're you kind of interact with bands a lot you know what i mean like a lot of the bands they're not they're not like rich and shit you know so a lot of times you get to interact with the band like just in the crowd, they'll be working their own merch booths. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, you just find out that these people that you, you know, that you're into the shit that they do, they're just human, you know? And I, right. I, I, I you know, um, even at cons, like I've met some people at con, like I, I think one of the, like I met Debo at a con, you know, I met Lance mm -hmm. Hendrickson from, you know, Aliens and Terminator, you know, Michael Bean. I, and they're just people, you know? um yeah i think people I, I like think, fans kind of forget that that they idolize them they they think of them as a big god status they, they, they're right they yeah. worship them yeah that's yeah. the thing so. and they're just people they're just people yeah and and i think social media has kind of like taken the 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 mystique and aura out of celebrities now because they always doing shit they always just saying shit you could just tweet a celebrity right now and you have probably a good chance of them just saying shit to you where yeah. you go back in the 90s, back in the 80s, they didn't happen. There was no social media. Everything they said was pre-played, you know, pre-planned ahead of time. Uh, you probably only saw a celebrity maybe twice a year, you know. Uh, that's why when Michael Jackson, you know, you saw him in on, in concert, people would pass out, you know. Uh, and he didn't, before he even started singing, he just looks at people and you got to carry people out of, of the stand because they're so excited to see him, you know. Yeah. And nobody ever passed out a Beyonce concert, just saying. Yeah, they do all this work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think w w once you realize that people are just humans, and you kind of like, that's how I was. I, like you know, like Fat T. Me and Fat T. We we're in Manhattan. Yeah. Back in the '90s, we we're at Tower Records. We we saw Michael Rapaport <laughs> at Tower <laughs> Records, <laughs> and we just said, "Hey, there's a dude from True Romance," because that's all we knew him from. You know, we didn't know him like Michael Rapaport now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jacob. Your instructions will become soon. But yeah. yeah, that that's fake hair. You know that he, he said you fake hair. <laughs> this is a wig, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Funny story. Yeah, like we talk about celebrities. I met Chuck D one time. Like Chuck oh, D yeah? was sitting as close to you are right now to me, even though we're like without. Well, anyway, <laughs> pretend like we're right next to each other. Like he could have put like, your He could have put his arm around you, right? I could have. Like Chuck D was at the close. I'm like, hey, I was like, hey, Chuck D. Like who? And he had like, it's Chuck D. 
he had all these groupies around him and shit like that. Like and all, all the pretty chicks that was at the place where he was at, they were by Chuck D, sitting right next to him. And we talked, and, and we kind of got, like, got an awkwardness. Like Chuck D was like, I'm trying to get on these chicks. Dude, you can <laughs> go somewhere. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, but that's about it. So, but no, I, was I, a, I was at a strip club with, with Testament, the band Testament. <laughs> and they were all getting lap dances and shit. And I'm like, hey, good. Sh-. Oh, I said, hey, good show, guy, guys. Because they don't want to. They had asses and the titties in their face. They don't want to. Right, right. Because you realize. Like, oh, you guys are so awesome. Like, no. Like, no. Get get your. Get, you know, get you, your you're on. almost like a groupie as well. Okay. Like, yeah. okay. It's cool when a bunch of chicks are on this dude right here. Yeah. But then you're on it. Like, you're competing with the chicks. Like. Yeah, give the like, guy no, some space. I just I, I let them. Yeah, no, get, you know, get your lap dances. You know, get you know, <laughs> get, get 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 them twerks in your face and shit. Just, yeah, get, I, look, know? Chuck D's trying to get groupies, man. I don't need to be in one of his groupies. Let him do his thing. I'll yeah. move on. So. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what are we talk about? Okay. Oh, speaking of uh cults, celebrity cults. Let's talk about this. Zack Snyder. Another <laughs> thing that was banned from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but it? we got to talk. Yeah, we got to talk about it because something happened this weekend. Well, this week, Zack Snyder tweeted. Yeah, that's what he did. He tweeted. Okay. He tweeted incoming transmission from Lord Darkseid. And then he played like a 30-second clip of the dude that did the Darkseid voice actor saying, something is coming April 28th. What's coming? We don't know. That's all we know. So what do we think was happening? Do we think that he's going to announce that DC has sold Justice League to Netflix and let him do his part two and part three at Netflix. No, it's not going to happen. I pl- I wish you guys would stop spreading that dumbass rumor. That's that will never happen. Plus, Netflix don't want the shit anyway. But what do I think is going to happen? Do I think they're going to release Zack Snyder's Justice League in the theaters, which they've never done before? Will they do it April 28th? I don't know. So, and if they will, will anybody go see a four hour movie in the theater? So, I'm not. <laughs> guess, guess who has two thumbs and will do that shit? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll give a fuck. I will sit there. I've been, I've been waiting for it. Eli, that's all I want is Justice League, Zack Snyder's cut, four hours in IMAX. Give it to me in IMAX. Give me all of that shit. Give it to me. Four hours. Intermission with an intermission and shit. No intermission. I will. No intermission. <laughs> no intermission. I will have a bottle next to me. <laughs> Uh, uh, adult diaper, whatever. I would go. I could. I could hold it for four hours. Can I hold it for four hours? I can hold it for four hours. I couldn't hold it doing Shazam. Let me. Let me go back. Let me think about that. I might have to take a break. Yeah. Okay. Give me intermission. You know. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. I give it. Give me all four hours of that in IMAX. I will be there. I will see it. So, but that probably they probably announced that either. I don't know what's gonna be. It's probably gonna be like. Guess what? I'm done with this shit. Stop asking about Justice League. Bye. And that's it. Or you're probably going to announce this new movie. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, what was what was Endgame? That was three? Was that over three hours? That was, it was right at, it was like three hours and three minutes. It was right there. Okay. We were soldiers. We know, I know, but nobody. What about, what yeah. about Return of the King? Return of the King was. It was good three hours. Yeah. It, all no, those no, 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 no. It, it was, it was three. It was three. It was three. It was like two hours and it was, it was almost three. I thought it, it was, was over three. three. Like it made it like. A little bit over three, like three hours, 10, 15, because it was longer than uh, the other two or three hours. But yeah, I think Return of the King went a little longer, but it wasn't no four. At least I don't. I'm not not four. I've never seen a four hour movie in the theaters. But yeah, Endgame was longest one. Uh, what else? Hell, Batman was like, what, two? Like the Batman was like two hours and 50 minutes or shit like that. Yeah, that was so, long. Yeah, yeah, it was long I, as hell, I too. So yeah. yeah, a lot of movies started to be that long, but we're holding it. But yeah, I don't know. Like maybe he'll announce. It, I don't know. But if I if I had my wish, something doable, I wish that was it. Zack Snyder, four hours, IMAX. I'm there. No, I'm going to be doing the theater. Guess it's what? Three hours, thirty minutes. The theatrical cut. Really? Damn. It was three hours, thirty minutes. I did not expect that. But you know, uh, like you know, like fucking. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. Fifteen yeah. twenty minutes of that was credits. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of that. That was before cause... cut. That was before after credit scenes. So once the credits rolled, we were out. So oh, you didn't see more, all. It the, was all more the... like three hours, 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, I remember. Oh, I just, just remember seeing over three, three hours, hours. <laughs> fifteen minutes. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So let me John see. Wick Four John is three Wick hours four. plus. Really? Why? What the fuck, man. Why? Why? What? 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 Yeah. What? What? The all hell, he does man? is shoot people. How many ways can you shoot people? Yeah. 
I don't what the know. hell? I don't know. I Maybe, say, I'm, man, I'm leave. Make, make movies 90 minutes again. <laughs> get in, get out. What was Cobra like? 90 minutes? Get 90 in, get minutes, out. And it's awesome. <laughs> Exactly. Cobra didn't need to be. What What can you do with a three hour Cobra? Feel movie? the heat. Yeah. <laughs> Feel the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you can do with that. Yeah. All right. So keep moving. Commando, point, 90 minutes. 90, get Termin- in, get out. Yo. Terminator 1, 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All our favorite 80 movies, 90 minutes. Get in, get yeah. out. Yo. Yeah. We didn't need no three hours movie. What the hell can you do with it? Why do you need a three hour movie? You don't. People have shit to do. You could watch two hours, two movies in three hours. Exactly. <laughs> you go just sneak out, go to the next, next theater, watch that one. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I, I believe when I see it that John Wick is three hours. That shit don't need to be the damn three hours. Yeah, that, that's a All little, right. that's, that's wrong. <laughs> All right. Like I said, let's move on to the next part of the podcast. Like I said, this is Comic Book Bullies. We were talking about comic books. And Eli, I'm going to let you jump in first with whatever you got. I know you got some stuff. But one of these books I wanted to read, see what, see what you're going to do. Okay. Well, I'll get the Star Wars book out the way. I'll do Yoda, number five. This is the, Yoda. The, the okay. Yoda's, Yoda's own series. And um, it's just, you know, go, he's remembering his life and times. You know, he's on Dagobah reminiscing about, you know, different adventures. And this one is when he is training some younglings, some Padawans, and um, one of them, a Wookiee, a Wookiee Padawan, a Wookiee youngling, is starting to have visions. Um, visions about his Trandoshan classmate. Now, Trandoshans, Bosk, uh, you remember Bosk, the lizard guy? He's mm-hmm. a Trandoshans. Trandoshans hunt Wookiees. Um, so they're like natural enemies. Um, we've seen that throughout, you know, like on uh, Clone Wars. There was an episode where, you know, Wookiees were being hunted by Trandoshans and shit. And if you can see in this panel up here, there's like a, like a fight between Trandoshans and Wookiees and shit. But anyways, there's a Wookiee and a Trandoshan, Padawans. They're all getting trained. And the Wookiee starts having visions that the Trandoshan classmate of his is going to go dark. So he, it's kind of plaguing him. Um, and it's just, and so this Wookiee Padawan goes to Dooku, a young Dooku, Count Dooku, when he was young. And um, Dooku's just like, yo, don't, Jedi don't fuck with visions. You know, they, they don't, you know, uh, they, 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 they kind of look down on, you know, they basically, they basically feel it adds to their like anxieties and it gets them worried about the future and it makes them like lose their concentration, you know? So, so, um, uh, Dooku's like, yeah, don't, don't tell Yoda about your vision, but just observe your classmate. Now that you've gotten this vision, just kind of observe her and just, you know, prepare. You know, watch her, prepare, and that way you'll be ready, you know. And so at the end of the book, um, they're, they're, they're doing this training, and the Wookiee ends up starting some shit. He ends up, like, attacking her. Um, yeah, so a, start, a fight starts. So it, it's, it's kind of cool. It kind of brings back, like, you know, Anakin was having those visions of his mom about Padme, and it's just like... You know, what was he supposed to do about that? You know, um, were they visions or were they just his fears? Were they his anxieties? Was him, you know, because especially theory, with Pat- My theory, Palpatine planted his shit on like Like he put it in his mind. Doesn't yeah. Like- and that's the thing. It's like with Padme, especially with Padme, was that just a fear of his? Was, just, was he just having reoccurring nightmares? Or were that was that... And it ended up becoming a self-serving prophecy. You know what I mean? Like he ended up be causing her death. He was worried about Padme dying, and he ended up causing her death. You right. Know? Um. So. So yeah, uh, it, it, it's just pretty interesting, and just and it's just you know deep, diving deep into Star Wars lore, and having the you know the rivalry between Wookies and Trandoshans, and it was pretty cool. So I enjoyed it. I'm still on this shit. Four out of five. So. Be cool. Nice. Okay. Uh, oh damn! I didn't share the link. Anyway, um, 
book I'm going to do next. Book I'm going to do next. I forgot to share this shit out also, and that's why we're not doing that. Book I'm going to do is uh, Immoral X Men. Okay. That one. So it's still in the Sins of Sinister wheelhouse, is what we're doing okay. right now. So, yeah, we're going to do with that. Um, basically, what it's about, like I said, this is actually fast forward 100 years into the future. Let me see if I can get everything going. It was 100 years in the future. Mr. Sinister is trapped with these assholes that are all sinister like him, and they all want to kill him. And he's basically like making deals with them not to kill him. You know, that's going on right now. So we're going to pick up from there. Ah, there we go. Let's get in there. Let's start the story. See exactly what we got. Sins of Immoral X Men number two, year 100. So the book starts off a 100 years in the future. And you got the X Men. So the X Men, like the last book, when it was 10 years in the future, they were saying like eventually the uh, all the Shi'ar and the scrolls and the Kree are going to eventually come for them. Unless they go to war with them first. 100 years in the future, they went to war with them. They whooping their ass, beating them. And they're basically killing all space aliens that anybody has a threat with them. That's what they're doing. They're killing everybody. Anybody that comes in contact with them. And Hope is the leader of them. And yeah, so she and she decides to like fight people by herself. So she shoots her by himself. And then you got the Super Scroll right there. Like I love Super Scroll. We don't talk about Super Scroll enough on this show. I'm gonna do a backstory on Scoop Scroll one day, but as of right now, Hope beats Shadow, kills him, and you got Exodus right there. Exodus like her, you know, her biggest celebrity groupie, you know, and they build some kind of nuke that can just blow up any planet. They just drop it. They can teleport it on any planet they want to to blow it up. So any alien planet that even is remotely a threat to them, they just take them out. You know, that's it. So yeah, the X Men have gone crazy. Meanwhile, Hope's body is back somewhere. And it's actually been chopped up into pieces because they can't clone her right. pro- properly. So they just leave her in the big thing that where she can clone people. And instead of having the five, they've cloned the five and the five clones everybody else. So they just got like this big factory where everybody just clones everybody. So they got this big, basically like stormtroopers. They just um, a thousand right now with a million on the way. And they got their own ship. They, they ride in the Marauder. You know, they just go around from planet to planet killing everybody. It's a quiet council. And they were like, oh, sinister. What the fuck you doing over there? So he he's basically uh like she's ready. So who's he talking about? He's talking about this. So okay, so the Quiet Council have cloned a whole bunch of Mystique slash Gray Crow clones. So she, they got okay. the power of both of them. Yeah. Oh, don't don't get too excited about that. I'm gonna tell you why in a second. <laughs> <laughs> because you got Mr. Sinister, who okay, okay, against the Mystique slash Gray, Gray Crow clones, he got his own clone called Rasputin. And basically, Rasputin, she he, she got all the uh, Rasputin siblings, you know, DNA in her, Colossus, Magic, and I think it's like a third brother, too, but I don't know about him. Meanwhile, like, Kitty Pryde's powers also, so she can, like, phase and super strong at the same time. So, and then they fight, and Rasputin just kills every single one of them, like nothing. Takes them out. So, yeah, and they just like, well, them clones suck. And then, basically, they actually sense, so, so I put five, you know, five mutant DNAs in this body. And Hope is like, well, can you do six? She's like, no. Six about five is the most I can do. I can't do more than six. Anything past that is this. So this is the most perfect DNA mutant creation I can make. I can't do better than this. And she's like, oh, really? So basically, Mr. Sinister has no more use for us. Because they only kept around to make clones. So now that he's made the perfect clone, and he can't make one better, it's like, well, we probably need to kill him now. Because we don't need him anymore. So it's like, okay. So Mr. Sinister realized it's only a matter of time for it to start coming for him. So he sees this book with a heart on it and he tries to open it, but it's got a lock on it. And that's when you see this like storm mutant hybrid DNA clone thing. It's not storm. It's actually another sinister clone. But notice that this sinister clone has a heart on her forehead, not a diamond. And she's like, who are you? We're like, I'm another sinister clone also. Like the uh, Nathaniel. Queen of Hearts? (laughs) They don't call it Queen of Hearts. That's obvious they should have called it that you know it makes sense Diamond, no, her name hearts we just need yeah it would make queens. sense no her name is mother righteous clubs and spades you know That's club is the know. other guy and okay you got spades club yeah spades is the other one i think spades is the most like evil of the sense clone but anyway they're saying that nathaniel essex like the original guy that became a sinister when he died he made four different versions of himself one of them is a sinister Another one is her and the spade and the 
club guys are out there too fucking up shit also the reason he made four different versions of them because he had this uh premonition that eventually giant robot guys gonna come down and destroy everything now this was all in jonathan hickman's run also i was about to say nimrod or whatever the fuck or... pa- past nimrod past nimrod okay. like when nimrod kills the mutants they come and kill nimrod that's that's how big these guys are they was in hickman's run also they're like a thousand years in the future so he like okay so you need to figure out how to not get killed by these robot guys and they say but they're only going to take one of us so yes yeah, so it's a fight between us four sinisters this the diamond, the club, the heart, and the spade, and the blah, 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 and whatever like that. Only one of us is going to survive. So and she's basically telling him how to survive. He's like, why are you helping me? You're like, I'm going to help you for right now because we need to team up to take out the other guys because they're coming for both of us. And she's like, okay, got it. And she's like, bye. And she leaves because she knows magic. She's like, oh, shit. Well, there's only one thing I can do. So Mr. Sinister comes with a plan. But before we get to that plan, we go back to Hope. And Hope is just going crazy about to kill some uh, Chitauris. So she decides to go down there and fuck them up some more. Goes down to the planet. Exit goes with her. And while it's going down there, Exodus does some crazy shit where he takes her powers away. And he goes back. He was like, oh, yeah, uh, Hope, I've got to tell you, you suck. I know I worship you, but you actually are better to be worshipped as a martyr. Because this little whiny 16-year-old girl you keep pretending to be, you're not a god. Nobody's going to take you seriously as a messiah. But as a dead messiah, you'll, you'll benefit for us more so make us proud and basically chitauri are just i'm ambushing her and all she got is cable's guns you know her dad's guns that's just like that so she starts shooting shit like that and you know eventually they're gonna take her out but she is happy to know that i won't be the only member of the quiet council to take out so then we cut to mr sinister and he's basically putting a needle in rasputin like okay this is the last thing i'm gonna give you then you're gonna be ready for battle and when he gives her the injection she you see her diamond eating. And she's like, what did you do? He's like, I freed you. You you no longer have, uh, we no longer have any control over you. You can just do whatever you want to do. She's like, well, why'd you do that? Because I need you to help me. Because they're going to kill me. The Quiet Council is going to kill me unless you help me. Now, whether you help me or not, that's up to you. I left you on your free will to do whatever you want to do. But we, I, I blew up this plan. I blew up Krakoa because of all my you know, plans and stuff like that. And I made this hell hole we're in right now and I'm stuck here and I need your help to get me back the time machine I need to reset all this shit and get everything back the way it was before. Uh, but if you don't help me, we're going to be stuck here. So I need you to help me save from my sin, the sins of sin, you know. And she's like, okay, well, what do we do? So then they take them over. They basically go aboard the Marauder and they hijack the Marauder and they sneak out of the base while they stay at the base, they got to get in a dog fight, stuff like that. And they shoot their way out and they take the Marauder. And basically, Mr. Sinister is just like, okay, we got to go find my Moria engine so I can reset this universe. And she's like, well, how long do you think that would take? Oh, uh, five years, maybe? The end. I love how they, it looks like Star Trek. We don't talk about Star Trek enough on this show, but that's basically how they make it look like. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So the next book's going to be a thousand years in the future. So, yeah. So yeah, like I said, it's it's all it's all stuff Hickman set up back then because Hickman talked about this stuff back then. How the X Men got into war with the Shi'ar and the Scrolls and the Kree and they killed them all off like that. He just wrote it in like in text in the back of those Powers of X books. They're showing it now, you know. Plus that that robot guy is supposed to show up a thousand years from now. I guess they're gonna be the next book. So yeah, okay. Sinister, sinister. All right. So yeah. So uh, what you got next? What, what do you got? Four out of five, five out of five. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I, I like, I like this book, man. I like this book, basically because they're just doing what Hickman already wrote. They're just doing it, so you can't fuck that up. I don't think, you know. All right, but we already know at the end of the day, it's all gonna be reset anyway. So I'm, I'm having fun <laughs> until then. So all right, okay. Well, the next book I'll do will be Wolverine, number thirty-one. Yeah, this is the one I wanted to know about. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you talk about this. I'm not gonna interrupt you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess this is supposed to be a good starting off point if you haven't been reading the Wolverine book. So people mm-hmm. are saying, because I haven't read Wolverine in a, a couple of years since there wasn't any fighting vampires and Omega Red and. Yeah, I was like, uh, and, uh, just getting too was it the day after Moria or some shit? Was there after her or some? I can't remember. Yeah, but um, it's been a while. I haven't read Wolverine in a couple of years now. 
Now, Gomer and them say that this Wolverine run is the best Wolverine run of all time. Of course. That's what they said. That's You're like, of they course. <laughs> <laughs> they would say that. the best thing ever. They're turning into <laughs> fucking, uh, uh, what, was the, what was the Olgar show? The Valiant. Get Valiant. The Valiant show? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the Get Valiant show. This Wolverine book, 11 out of 10. Yeah, 10 out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> this was perfect. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So, this has Beast. Hank McCoy basically turning into a villain. Now, I don't know what's been going he's, on. He's been like that for a while. He's yeah, like I, I guess I guess he's been doing some shit lately. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm just now jumping on, so I don't, I'm not privy to any of that history. But he's basically full-on villain in this. He's cloned himself a bunch of times. He's Oh, you can't you can't do that. You, yeah. You, you, he's okay. taken his he's erased his memories from the Krakoa database or whatever. Yeah, he's taking all his memories, so they can't even—they don't even know. Like, so there was a scene where they're like, "Check, bring up Hank McCoy's memories from like last week. Let's see what he's been doing." And like, hey, they're all gone. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, he's taking, I guess, X Force's base, and it's now it, and turned it into this big giant tree robot thing with a skull on it. Okay, and now it's under the ocean. He's under the ocean, um, like taking out. So he out has submarines. an evil lair underwater. Okay. Yeah, evil lair underwater. He takes out some submarines. Like no, nope, no one's gonna fucking see me. And all these 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 submarines that are trying to monitor Krakoa. Fuck them. And he like mm-hmm. takes out the submarines. Um, I guess Wolverine had killed him. Yeah, that's and what I'm he, saying. Like, why is Beast back? Because it was a book where I think the but last when, book. But yeah. when he killed them. He turned into like this fungus Last of Us monster. Oh, that's what they were. I didn't know what Gomer was talking about. Okay. Yeah, he like cut. Yeah, and Wolverine fucks him up, like stabs the shit out of him, splits his head open, and then his head just like splits open, and these fungus mushrooms come out, and then Wolverine starts fighting that, that and shit. Okay. But I guess he Beast killed Wolverine at some point too. So, uh, but Wolverine's been cloned. So I don't know. I don't know about any of that. But basically. Beast has gone full on the villain. He's and ev- and he's always he's ta- the whole time he's talking about he's doing this for the good of mutant kind, for the good of Krakoa, you know, Magneto shit. You know. Right. Um so yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I think Beast as a villain makes him kind of cool. Like he's he, that works for me. <laughs> well, see, that's the thing. I mean, there's a fan theory right now that is this beast. Or is this Dark Beast? Okay, now, Dark yeah. Beast was from Age of Apocalypse, like when they did that whole Apocalypse reset shit. But somehow he jumped over from that universe to this universe. And nobody knows what happened to him. So yeah. this might be him. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my thing is that I've never been a Beast fan. You know, I always thought he was, you know, he's just a big furry nerd. Big giant gerbil. I want a King Kong. You got a giant gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> he's playing but against I, type, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, oh, well, he's a villain. Well, he, that that's kind of cool. I'm just saying. And, and see the thing is, they planted the seeds like at the beginning of this whole X Men thing. Like Beast was doing shady shit, and I guess this is what it eventually came to. Yeah. So, yeah. so e- evil Beast is kind of cool. Like he's more interesting to me now. So. <laughs> but he's like working on the behalf of, or, or he like fuck Krakoa. No, he's like, no, he's this is all to protect Kokoa, protect like, okay. Mutant yeah. Everything he does is all for the good of the mutants and all that shit. Okay. You know? Still super villain shit, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Believing in his righteous cause, which is the best villain. So. Not for evil, but for good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unnecessary sacrifice. Excellent, <laughs> you know. <laughs> shit, now I gotta read this book. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm gonna catch up with it. After I finish reading shitty ass Stormwatch, I'm gonna start over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll okay. give it a four out of five. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, what book are we going to do next? Okay. Damn, what? I did an X Men book first. You did an X Men book. I'm doing another X Men book. Where, where did we <laughs> turn into? Week. Where did we turn into Goldman's podcast? I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a light week, man. So I, I, mean, I don't even be on X Men like that. But I'm just like, you know what? I, I, I. Ha- Here's the thing. This next book, I had to review. I'm obligated, contractually obligated, to review this book. Is it the Bishop book? It's the Bishop book, yeah. 
I didn't give a fuck about the book, but I have to read it because the thing is, if I don't read it, people are gonna look at me like, "Well, Leroy, what happened in this book, this Bishop book?" And if I don't know, they look at me crazy. So I have to See, read go the read book. it. I'm not telling I, you, go read it. <laughs> they're not gonna read it. I can't tell people not to read it because they're like, "Well, you didn't read it. Support, read it. Support. <laughs> don't support this bullshit. <laughs> not this." <laughs> so yes, this Bishop War College. I'll tell you in a second why I had to read this book because people will be talking about the book. People have been talking about this book. It's not a very good book, but when I review it, you'll know why everybody's talking about it. So let's get to it. Bishop War College. You can't see what's going on the cover right now, but you'll see in a second. All right. So let's get to it. Bishop is he just woke up and he's in another, he's an alternate universe because he got attacked by the Strucker twins and he got teleported to a different timeline. So he's on Earth 63. And what is on Earth 63? The Black X Men. That's why people are reading this book. Yeah. So you got Black Cyclops, Black Jean Grey, and all these fuckers. I don't Black know Juggernaut? Is that Black Juggernaut back there? I don't think he's too small to be black. Who's that? Yeah. I'm trying <laughs> to see who this is. It's like, why you got anyway. So anyway, they looking at him and, and you know, and she's just like, oh, don't worry. I'm Jean Grey. It's OK. He's like, no, you're not Jean Grey. And he gets ready to pull his gun out. He's like, yeah, I'm not Green Day. I'm about to stop you right now. And that's me like, he's got a gun, you know. So then Black Cyclops goes, yeah, I'm, I'm saying black in front of everybody. I don't care. You know, uh, so black Jean Grey tries to uh, put some mind spell on him, like, okay, go to sleep, but you can't mind control any of the X-Men because day one of the X-Men, Professor X makes sure you can't do that. So they can't mind control them, can't mind wiping them like that. And Cyclops, is, well, Black Cyclops is like, well, let me handle this. And then he gives them a, a full blast of, you know, Black optic beams, you know, uh, <laughs> Beast controls it. And he's just like, did I say beast? I meant bishop. That's what I'm going to say. And, and he's just like, yeah, thanks for the boost. I needed that. You juice me up real quick. Because they forgot he has the powers to, you know, absorb energy and shoot it right back at you. So that's what he does. He shoot it back. Hey, oh, shit. You know. Wait, Cyclops got dreads? Anyway, uh, I'm getting sidetracked. He blasts both of them, you know. And, you know, Black Jean Grey just blocks and shit like that. She's like, we're paying passwords. And while she can block them, then all of a sudden they get attacked by the other x-men and you got them so you got black angel black Iceman, and black beast so so and he's got dreads so yeah so yeah he's fighting the x, and it's what you hear enough and you got black professor x so hey if you want to get uh what, what's the guy's name garcino what, 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 what's the guy you know the guy i'm talking about oh john carlo yeah him if you want him there you go <laughs> so he's there he's just like oh, lucas bishop he was like you're not professor x he was like i thought oh, we we're gonna get denzel you. to play no that was magneto wasn't it that was, right magneto. so you're gonna get Guan, that guy moff gideon he's gonna play professor x and <laughs> denzel is gonna play magneto that's gonna happen yeah so you got all the black x man he's just like what is this place he was like uh he was like i knew you were coming and don't worry i know you're not gonna hurt anybody i know you're good because don't worry we're basically variants you know Oh, uh, but like he attacked us. He's like, yeah, he attacked us, but don't worry, he didn't mean any harm because I know uh the good Lucas Bishop and the Goose Lu Lucas Bishop is some kind of nerd on their world. So yeah, so that's that's Bishop, the nerdy looking dude, Steve Urkel looking dude. Yeah. So yeah. And the rest of the book that's about Maury Mataggart uh trying to take over Krakoa, she's drilling on the planet, and you got the kids, the bishop training. Uh, trying to stop them from doing it, even though they have no powers, blah, 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 the end. So, don't give other shit. Well, the art, That's it. The art looks dope. I'm just going to say that. The art looks dope. I give it to them. But it's a gimmick, but it's a gimmick that's got people talking. So, fine. Do what you want to do. You want to make Black X-Men, make Black X-Men. I don't care. So, is, is this is this a woke book? Too woke? Why are there only black people on that black planet? <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure somebody gonna say that. So, uh, yeah. I mean, people are gonna get mad at, it, but why get mad at? It? Because it's just a one-off thing. It's a five-issue book. You'll probably never see these black people again until Black History Month and Marvel comes back again, and then they show them again. Then they put them back in the box again, just hide them. So, yeah, this is. I only read this out of obligation. That's it. I'll be glad when this shit is over, with so I can I can actually get book back to books I want to read. So, yeah. Oh, uh, three out of five. 
Because right. honestly, I only care about the Black X Men, and they were only in the book for like about what? What would I read? Like ten pages or something like that? Eight pages like that? Because the rest of the book is about other shit. The CW teeny bopper shit that uh Bishop is training. I don't care about them folks. So anyway. <laughs> Well, you, sound you, like, you sound like me back when I was. <laughs> I guess I guess I do. <laughs> oh man, it all comes full circle. Yeah, all right. I'll do this. Ninja Turtles, the new Ninja Turtles, Last Ronin, The Lost Years, number two. Say that five times fast. <laughs> yeah. Did you read the this? Lost Ronin, The Last Years. <laughs> Did you read this? Uh no, I didn't. I I. I I feel like they told the story they need to tell. So I'm whatever you well, got. You can I'm, say that again. They sure did. <laughs> <laughs> this this book wore me out. <laughs> <laughs> this is very wordy. Um, it was just a slog to read, but it's explaining what Michelangelo was doing before he went to New York, and the events of the Last Ronin. Uh, basically he was, you know, after his brothers and Splinter died, he kind of went on his own and was living on his own. But then he he's in Japan. He comes along this like criminal organization called the death worm. And he starts fighting with them. Then he starts searching for them. And he spent years just kind of looking for these criminals. And he ends up at one point, he ends up at, at some island in china and he trains for some kung fu master and that was probably the most interesting part of the book for me it was when he's like training with this chinese kung fu master and which is like a different philosophy than ninjutsu so but but kind of similar so he's learning new techniques he's learning like kung fu instead of you know because karate and you know japanese like it's two different styles karate is right. very very hard and very forceful and kung about fu having is, a strong stance yeah, yeah and kung fu is all about deflection and you know water uh, so the, you must yeah, be water yeah and and, yeah. and you start out slow your movements are slow and you it doesn't look like it's 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 very powerful because you're doing all these very slow movements but when you put it all together it's like you know what i mean uh you know these really slow hand movements can be very fast you know and they can do a lot of damage, especially if you're holding a knife. A kung fu guy had a knife. We just slit your throat like ten times. <laughs> right, you won't even know. You bleed now. Don't even know. And, what and you won't even know it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so it was like really cool. Like that. That sequence was like interesting and probably my favorite part of the book. But other than that, it was just like basically Michelangelo and his, you know, the sort of inner monologue for like thirty pages. It was this long. So if, as you can see, this is the scene where he's training with the Kung Fu master. And look at all these word bubbles. That's basically the whole book. It just, mm -hmm. it was like a, a coat, Black Panther. <laughs> 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 um, just, it, yeah, just kind of long and drawn out and just, yeah. So I wasn't feeling it this week. Um, yeah. Like I said, it wore me out. So, yeah. and then there's, of course, there's all, it, it, it switches between what's going on now with those baby turtles that they're, they're training now too. Yeah. Um, the one, like one name, like Monier or some shit. I can't remember. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Odin or something. And yeah. yeah, they're all training and, you know, they're all different, you know, offshoots of, you know, the old turtles. And it's like Casey Jones daughter is Casey Jones and April's daughter is training them and all that. And, it's like, eh, whatever. So I, I don't know. I wasn't feeling. I fuck it. Two out of five. I, I, Damn. Okay. This was a. This was just the drag. This was kind of a drag. I, don't, I mean, to me, the story just feels unnecessary. Like the whole arc feels unnecessary. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. It's all. It's this is him talking about. Yeah. So then I went here, and then I went there, and then I trained with this guy, and then I followed the criminals there, and then we got into a fight here, and it's just like, that's all it was. It's like. Yeah, but it's kind of like when you when you got a popular movie, and you're like, oh, it's so popular, we got to do a sequel because we know it makes money. Like Joker, yeah, and Joker Two, we don't need a Joker Two, yeah, we can make one anyway. And it feels like this also, like the first book was so popular, makes more shit. So, I don't know. well, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the thing. It's like there's an interesting story of 
Mikey reflecting on his brother's deaths and stuff like that. And that that's right. kind of interesting, but it's just him going from set piece to set piece, kind of just meandering. And there's really mm-hmm. no, just basically we're going to get him from point A to point B. And that's just the, the reasons why prequels kind of suck and don't work. Cause that's already how, know how it ends. Yeah. You already know there's no tension. There's no stakes involved. Cause you already know what's going to happen unless right. you give us like some sort of, you know, you know, some big revelation or yeah, yes. like you know that makes you look at what you seen in a completely different light. That's the only way it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like you know taking and that's one if they don't end up retconning stuff they've done before because they because the writer forgets, which yeah, at more more often happens than not. Yeah, because it's just like oh, I, I I'm just I gotta they're just moving Mikey to New York, right? You know that's all. They're just, Michelangelo needs to get to New York, and this is just him on his way to New York you know, and not much other really happens than him fighting this criminal organization. And it's just a bar fight. He's just in a bar kung fuing a bunch of like thugs and shit. So it's like nothing, Mm -hmm. nothing too, you know, great. You know what I mean? So it's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's your typical prequel. That's just, you know, just going through the formula, going through the motions, you know, trying to like explain the shit that you need to get to. Like, like kind of like taking a whole episode of The Mandalorian and trying to fucking fix some shit from in later episodes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, just let it go. People forget about it. Just, yeah, just let we it don't go. Give you have to work that hard just, for just it. Get, yeah. yeah, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like, comics learned this shit a long time ago. Comics thing is, if they don't talk about it, you'll forget about it. They don't go into yeah. detail about this shit. Most of the time, just, like, how did this guy come back to life? Shh, don't worry about that. Yeah. He's just back. Unless Grant that's, Morrison or Hickman writes something like, oh, my God, that's genius. He's right. mentioned some dude who showed up in one panel 30 years ago. <laughs> right. And now he's the big bad of this next story. Like, Yeah, Girl. he's like, that's that's genius. And oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was me the whole time. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So what do we got? Okay. Nick, last book. Last book we're going to do is a Superman book. Yeah. Okay. So a Superman book. Is this book. that Black Label book? I don't know. I don't know if it's black label or what it is, but it's written by it's written by Christopher Priest. Okay, yeah. By Christopher I, Priest. I was looking yeah. at this, yeah. I didn't get written it. Written by Priest. I don't think it has a black label book on it. It may have a black label book on it, but I didn't. But it is out of continuity. Okay. So I don't even know if black label is even a thing anymore. It's it's just whatever. But anyway, it's yeah. Elseworld. It is it yeah. it may be Elseworld, maybe not Elseworlds, but it doesn't take place to continue with what's going on right now. That's all we need to know. So base point it is Superman's lost that's what it is how do you get lost we will talk about it so let's start the story boom and let's get to like i said this is very much a priest book if you read any priest book it's it's that so let's get to it and, and that, that kind one of out of ten huh no shit <laughs> one out of ten this is pretty <laughs> he always say so anyway book starts off i'm gonna just bypass this lowest telling story about a time superman saved somebody he saved a, a politician that somehow had a million dollars with cash in, the, in their trunk. So he had to do anything? Nothing really. Move on past that. Clark is fishing a toaster. Cuz, you know. Uh, Lois Lane is drinking coffee. I guess she's about to go somewhere in a little while. Superman's got to go somewhere to uh, do something. But they're like, hey, uh, we got about 10 minutes to spare. What you want to do? They don't say what they did, but... They passed 10 minutes. No. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, Superman is gone. Hey, he speaking like, of which, speak, they, Superman and Lois on the, on the CW. They were no. banging it out on that show. They were going in like rabbits. Like, damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So we get to the story. Okay. So Lois is working on a, a story. And then she uh, wakes up and sees Superman just staring out, out in the wall. And she's like, okay. She goes to bed. Like, just let me know when you go to bed. She wakes up. He's still standing in the same spot. Didn't move anywhere. It's like, I made breakfast. You want to get some breakfast? Want to go out? To eat? And he doesn't move. He's just staring at the city the whole time. He's just like, uh, Clark, the hell going on with you? Are you there? And she's just like, uh, like, you only been gone for like 20 minutes. She's like, no, I wasn't gone for 20 minutes. I was gone for 20 years. She's like, what? Yeah. And then she hears the doorbell. She's like, the hell let me go answer this doorbell see what the hell you're talking about you've been gone for 20 years and she opened the doorbell it's batman 
And she just, and she's like, Lois, I got some bad news for you. Uh, and he turns around. He's like, what the fuck? He sees Superman standing there in the door, in the uh, in the hallway. And Lois is like, okay, Bruce, what the hell did you do? Because you came here, you thought Superman wasn't going to be standing right there. So you look shocked. Like, even you couldn't fool me on that one. And she's like, I, I need to go. Like, no, you need to stay. You need to tell me exactly what the hell happened right now. And Superman's like, uh-uh, it wasn't Bruce's fault. It was my fault. You're angry at me. Stay focused on me. And she's like, okay, so what happened on the last mission you went on? He's like, okay, here's what happened in the last mission. We went, uh, uh, there was a, a, a fighter plane got shot down in the Chinese uh, sea board. And Lois like, bullshit. No, it didn't. Y'all just make up that story just to tell the press that because you don't want an international incident to happen. What really happened with what you happened? You're like, okay, I'll tell you what really happened. We were in the Philippines, Subic Bay. And that's where the Chinese fighter plan went down. It was over American soil or close to the Western soil. Since they were close enough to the Americans. The Americans started shooting at the Chinese plane. Chinese plane called for backup, started shooting at the American plane. And next thing you know, if this situation gets too out of hand, we're looking at World War III. So then they decided to call in the big guns. And who are the big guns? The Justice League. They called in the Justice League to basically stop an international incident from becoming World War III. You know, uh, of course, they call it Aquaman because they're fighting overseas. You know, uh, Aquaman takes out some people. Uh, Green, Lan- Green Arrow and Batman just on a submarine, just talking shit to each other because that's what they do. Uh, Flash, to make sure that they don't call more for more backup, he's creating a whirlwind that's creating a static that they can't call out. So that's one thing. Uh, Green Lantern, meanwhile, is taking the Chinese planes and dragging them away from the firefight. But he's trying to make sure that they thrusters don't, you know, make them buck and get away from them. And one of them is like, don't worry, my jet is going to make sure that their jets don't get out of control. And they're like, what jet? What what jet are you talking about, Wonder Woman? She's like, exactly. Because she's an invisible plane. They can't see it, you know. Uh, meanwhile, Martian Manhunter is taking the uh, American fighter plies and just mind control them, just tell them to get the hell out of here. So just leave. So they basically dispel the international incident. So like, good job, just leave. Meanwhile, they go diving for the thing the Chinese were looking for. And what were they looking for? They were looking for a spaceship. That's what they're looking for. They had it in the Chinese uh, see, but they dropped it here and they went back to go look for it. Uh, what they found out is that the spaceship is actually creating a black hole. And the black hole is getting bigger. If they don't stop it, that black hole is going to destroy the Earth because it's, gonna, it's a big singularity. And basically, Batman has came up with a plan that this black hole, none of you can survive it. Martian Manhunter can't survive it. Wonder Woman can't survive it. Hal can't survive it. There's only one person that can survive on this black hole. It's a job for Superman. So Superman's like, I'll do it. I'll take care of it. But here's the thing. Y'all wrap the, the lasso of truth around me, and y'all make sure I don't go too far in there. You know, I don't, you know, get lost in the, in the black hole. So as long as you got the lasso on me, and that's it. And the Lord's is like, okay, so you sent him in there? Like, no, Batman didn't send me in there. Jorel sent me in there. Martha Kent sent me in there because I'm Superman. That's what I do, you know. Uh, so he goes in there, but the thing was, he goes in there, he becomes one with the black hole. And when they pull out the rope, he's not on the other end of it. So they lost him. So, and like, oh shit, we lost Superman. What are we going to tell Lois? Not knowing that he's already back. So, and that's when Superman's just like, this is what happened. And he tells the story how he'd been lost for 20 years. The end. So, or to be continued, whatever you want to. So, good strong start. You know, I I, I simplified it because Priest is out there, you know. <laughs> so I try to break it down as much as I could. But overall, it's a good premise to a story. Basically, Superman lost in space, didn't know where he is. So, yeah. Uh, Goku could have teleported back home. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, what, what, what you got next? Hit. Can he do that now? Didn't you say Superman can well, teleport? Well, okay, yes. In the new continuity, yeah. he can do that. But this is Elseworld, so he can't do that. Okay. So, yeah. So they try to do that bullshit with him. The new Superman, yeah, he'll just teleport back where he is. And yeah, just, just fuck everybody up. So, yeah. So, uh, yes, yeah, so what you got next? No, I'm booked out. Okay, I'm booked out also. Uh, Like I said, if you listen this long, different like, share, subscribe. Uh, Share it out. Put it out. Hit us in the algorithm. I have uploaded us into the podcast platform on YouTube. I don't know if it's going to do anything. It may do something. We'll see. Oh, uh, yeah. 
what I got to say. Oh, and I want to thank everybody for having one of our uh, for promoting one of our biggest posts of the year. I wasn't gonna do this the same thing, but I decided to do it now. Uh, this one, where is it? I can't find it. <laughs> nope, not that one. Damn it, I lost it. Never mind. Big, biggest post. Yeah, our biggest post of the. Damn it. My fan. I set everything up and now I can't even find it. Where is it? Is it here? Never mind. Fuck it. Don't worry about it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do a thing, but I can't do a thing because I didn't have this thing set up like that. But anyway, we're going to go out on some Bobby Caldwell. Like I said, the the inventor of Blue Eyes Soul. Take that, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> so <laughs> until then, this is Leroy. Uh, this is Eli. We'll talk to you guys this week. Same bullet time, same bullet channel. Search to find the love within I came back to let you know Got a thing for you And I can't let go My friends wonder what is wrong with me Well, I'm in a daze From your love, you see Make me do